Hey everyone, it's Rhea here, and in this video, I want to talk to you about Yusuko Camp. What is Yusuko Camp like? A lot of people asked me this question, and I thought it'd just be fun to talk about it. So, Yusuko Camp, for those of you who don't know, is where the top 25 contestants from Yusuko Platinum are invited to. So they spend 10 days at this camp, and then at the end, the top four are selected to represent the US in the IOI team, which competes internationally with the top four of a bunch of other countries to figure out who wins the international tournament. And U.S. often does pretty well in that. In fact, a few years ago when I was in high school, one of the top competitors in the U.S. was Benjamin Chi. He was number one in the U.S. and he also ranked number one in IOI. So he's just super smart, incredible guy. So what is Yusuko Camp like? Well, the first thing is Yusuko Camp is actually split into two groups of people. The first group is called Guernseys and the second group is called Holsteins. And Grinzies and Holsteins, if you don't know, are two breeds of cows, so it fits with the Yusuko theme of cows. So the Grinzies are people who it's their first time to camp that year. So if it's your first time going to camp, you are likely going to be a Grinzie. There's some exceptions, but for the most part, first-timers are Grinzies. Holsteins are the people who have returned to camp, so this is their second, third, fourth plus time in camp. Now, one exception is, for, if you're a senior you're gonna, and you get you invited to camp, you automatically become a Holstein. Now, the Holsteins are the group of campers who are competing to be on the IOI team. So the Holsteins take contests almost every day, and the top competitors from Holsteins are on the IOI team. Well, technically, there's nothing bearing the Guernseys from making the IOI team. Typically, as the Holsteins are selected to be the higher-level campers, they're the ones competing for the IOI team, and they're usually the ones who make it. It's very rare to have a Guernsey on the IOI team, although it's not impossible. The Guernseys come to Yusuko camp so that we train them, and hopefully in the future they come back as a Holstein. So the criteria to get into Yusuko camp as a return camper is higher than to get into Yusuko camp as a new camper. It's higher because if you're a Holstein, you have to convince the coaches that you have a pretty good shot at making the IOI team, or now the EGOI team too. And so you have these Holsteins and Guernseys, where the Holsteins are competing for the IOI team, and the Guernseys are just in the camp for the first time. Now, the reason is that seniors are automatically put into the Holstein category is they're not going to be trained for next year. This is their final year. Occasionally, if you're doing really, really good on the contest, it's possible to go straight from uh, Platinum to Holstein and skip the Guernsey, but it's it's not it's not super common. And Guernseys can't make IOI. So it's not a huge reason for this to happen. So now, with the addition of EGOI finalists, all the EGOI finalists follow the same thing. So if they're a return EGOI finalist, they become a Holstein, otherwise they're um, a Guernsey. So the Holsteins are competing for a spot on the IOI team. The EGOI finalists are competing for a spot on the EGOI team. And the Guernseys, they do have a couple of contests, but they're mostly taking classes and learning. The Guernseys have four lectures and two contests, whereas the Holsteins have six lectures. The EGOI team, I think, you know, the first year I was in camp as a coach for the EGOI team, and the, for, as a EGOI camp coach, um, the EGOI team also took two contests except for the ones that were Holsteins. So it, that's also still fluid because that's pretty new, but that's sort of how the contest structure works for IOI. One of the most best experiences that I had in camp was, and this happened like all three times I went to camp, it was staying up late and hanging out with people, just playing board games, playing chess, playing back house, playing what is it, Secret Hitler, Hanabi, all those different games super late, up to super late at night. That was like one of the most fun experiences going to camp because you're not really around people on a day-to-day -day basis, at least I wasn't, because I didn't have that many musical people at my school. And definitely not people silver or higher. And so it was super fun to be around people who do musical like me and who are at that high level. And it's just, you just connect because they're just so much similar to you. And that's like one of the things that I found really fun. Now, as a Guernsey, you don't really have that many contests. You're not really competing for the IOI team. So you can just stay up super late at night and play board games, hang out with people, play card games, watch a movie, just have a great time. That was one of the things that I really loved about camp the first time I went. When you come back as a Holstein, there is a lot more pressure on you to try to make the IOI team and you have contests first thing in the morning. I think it's either like breakfast is at eight or nine or something. So you have to get up pretty early. So it's harder to stay up late playing games. But my first year as a Holstein, I still did stay up pretty late. My second year, not as much because I was really focused on uh, really focused on the contest. So it's up to you how you want to split it out, but definitely the first two you go to the camp, take full advantage of the fact that you're just here to learn and have fun and just have a great time. Uh, Melody posted a YouTube video, which I will link here and in the description below, which she had like a full vlog of Yusuko Camp. Um, and You can go check that out. It's super fun and you know, she'll show a lot of different activities that you do at camp. I think in her video, there was like uh, mini golfing. One was at the ice cream parlor we have there, a bunch of push-up competitions, which 
I don't know why those exist, but they do. Um, when I was in camp, some of the other stuff we had was like movie nights. Uh, we would go whitewater rafting. We'd go to Six Flags. So there's a couple of days which are completely empty, like no contest, no used to go lectures or anything. And on the last day, you either go to like whitewater rafting or Six Flags or something fun, just ultimate frisbee tournaments, just a whole bunch of fun activities. And one of the years they even did, they took people to a lab and I was a coach this year, so I didn't get to participate as much, but I saw the campers were having a lot of fun. We took people to a lab where they were making ice cream. So they were developing their own ice cream flavors and and they made them on the spot and they were able to taste the flavor that they developed. And it was, it was super cool. Right. For me, it was also the first time flying by myself somewhere. I had, I made it for the first time in 10th grade. So I was 15 years old. And my parents were a little nervous letting me fly on my own, but hey, they let me go. And it was super great because I'm from Bay Area. So there's also a whole bunch of other musical campers who happened to be in the same flight as me. And I didn't know them on the way going. So I didn't really talk to them on the way back. I knew a whole bunch of them. So it was a fun experience like that. If you get the chance to attend Musical Go Camp, I highly recommend you take full advantage of all the fun activities that you are. The coaches are also really there to support you, help you out with any coding questions you may have. I would always ask coaches about different coding problems I was stuck on, and they were super helpful. Also, if you're a Guernsey, all the hostings are also there to help you out. Even if you're a hosting, like the higher, other hostings are also there to help you out too. So everyone's really there to collaborate on problems. After each contest, people are just collaborating on problems for a while talking about problems over lunch there's a lot of coding talk there too as you might imagine some, sometimes people are just coding there's also usually a fun uh coding game so some sort of coding competition thing um one of my years in camp there was a i don't know how to explain this game i will link a video to it but a sort of game where there's like a ball being shot and there's like two goals on each side. sort of like air hockey but the paddle can only move up and down and you have three paddles that move up and down, and the other team does two. And the goal is to try to score as many goals as possible. Just to write a bot to do it. And so we did that. We submitted our bots, and then on the last or on one of the days of camp where they were doing the final tournament between all the teams, they actually had this projected onto a building. And yeah, that was a fun experience too. Other competitions have included uh, a poker bot, different different games like that. So. Zeal Camp is just a really fun experience, um, and I highly recommend you take full advantage if you do get the opportunity to go. I hope this was entertaining for you. I hope you learned something about Zeal Camp. I know I get a bunch of questions about that, so I figured I'll just make a video to address them. Uh, and yeah, that's all I have for you today. So I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you later. Bye.